one of the things that I get all excited about, but I'll never be able to resolve intellectually, is the origin of slavery. Uh, we know that slavery is prehistoric. And we, and we say, you know, we can say that because the very first stylus on clay tablet cuneiform records of ancient Sumeria, which are the very first human records, are records of slavery. The price of slaves, counts of slaves, how they were acquired through conflict and so forth. So clearly, it was not just existing before the first written records, it was existing in a fairly sophisticated way. So there is a question in my mind that I, I'll never be able to resolve, but I find it a wonderful intellectual challenge to think, how does any human being come to the point where they can completely control another person, use violence and use, use that violence to exploit people? You know, how did that evolve in the prehistory of human, human societies in their most primitive, if we still use that word, but their earliest forms. There seems to be a kind of familial model, the idea that you know, the way that you can control offspring can sometimes be total and violent control and be exploitative as well. I mean, we don't want to do that these days with our middle class kids, but you, know, you look back and you see that. It, <coughs> it also seems that as you look at prehistory and early history, and I mean really early history, Iron Age stuff, uh, you, you begin that period of the domestication of animals and, the, sh and the, the nature of enslavement begins to shift from what I would think to be a familial model, a family model, to an animal domestication model. So that you actually get to the point where Aristotle writes the ox is the poor man's slave. In other words, he's equating the ox and a slave and saying, you know, if you, if, if you can afford it, you'll buy a human, but if you can't afford it, you'll end up dying an ox, which is kind of interesting because oxen were also very expensive. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means it's also, slavery is also pre-legal. You know, the Code of Hammurabi, the famous one that we study at university because it's the first written legal code, if you actually read that straight through, what you discover is about 30% of the Code of Hammurabi is about slavery which tells us that it was a highly sophisticated part of that society before they even wrote the laws down. So it was pre-legal in a sophisticated way and had to be included in that. It was also pre-monetary, so that when we have those moments where we see here's the invention of money, we discover that they come after the records of enslavement. So pre-monetary, pre-legal, pre-historic, it's a fascinating question in my mind, like how does slavery even begin and, and then what does it evolve into? It's, there's never been a day in human history without it. Uh, it doesn't, it's not in every society, however. And that's also kind of important because it's not a integral, inherent part of the human existence. You know, there are plenty of societies that have existed for thousands of years with no slavery whatsoever. And there's, of course, that part in all of us as individuals that says, I don't want to enslave anybody, but even more importantly, I don't ever want to be enslaved. So it's not like we're born to slavery, and yet it's been this kind of semi-permanent condition and it's evolved to respond to almost every type of economic and political change that's occurred in 5,000 years. So you see a, uh, an empire like the Roman Empire that runs on slavery the way America runs on oil. You know, the, all the wars of conquest of the, and the expansion of the Roman Empire were fueled exactly by conquest of geographical areas and the harvesting of entire populations to the slave markets of Rome or to other main cities that would then bankroll the payment of the legions and the armies and so forth. And you see this interesting expansion and contraction of slavery linked to almost all imperial growth, the Ottoman Empire and then the uh, European empires of the 18th and 19th century, they don't, instead of taking over it all physically and making it all colonies, but it's all about the harvesting of the slaves for North America, until you even get into the modern late 20th century, early 21st, and you have this new globalization form of empire building, where you don't take physical possession of the land, but you still take physical possession of the people, at least temporarily, as inputs into just-in-time economic processes. So. Anything that we've been able to think of as human beings, clever or evil, in terms of economic exploitation, somebody's always been able to figure out a way to build slavery into that as well. Mm -hmm.